Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome to Talk 4, the quickfire podcast where we ask four great questions to unique and interesting people. We are at episode 54. Five now, so we've done really well. Um, behind the mic today is your host Louis Scoopian. That's me, and our very special guest for today, Aaron Williamson, who's going to be answering our questions today. Aaron, please say hi, introduce yourself, and give us a quick rundown of who you are and what you do before I shoot some questions. All right, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Uh, thank you, Louis. Uh, yeah, so I'm Aaron Williamson. I'm a U.S. Marine veteran. Um, I'm in the film industry as an actor, a stunt performer, and a celebrity trainer. Uh, I do some speaking, and uh, I'm into the mental health. I'm a big mental health advocate. You know, it's it's very important these days. So that's kind of my my wheelhouse right there. And I do some online uh, online fitness coaching. I've seen, yeah. So clearly a very, a very busy guy, and he's got he's got the jacket on right now. But I can just say this dude is built like crazy, and he has. I'm sure we'll get into it, but one of the most insane morning wake ups I've ever heard of. It's mental. So I can't wait to ask about it. Um, yeah, had a bit of a break. Um, we we tried to get this organized for for a little while, but I came down with nastiest illness, unfortunately, over over Christmas. So that was my gift from the world. Not very nice. Um, I'm just finishing the antibiotics now, and I'm all better. Looking forward to asking four questions to this really cool person. So, Aaron, if you are ready to go, shall we crack on with question number one? Let's do it. Fire it up. Let's go. Right. So my first question, um, tell me a bit about your backstory then, Aaron. So how did you originally get into the military? How did you become Marine and what motivated you to join and what was it like? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's a, uh, that's a lot of stuff right there. So essentially, you know, I grew up in Daytona beach, Florida, and as many people in their youth would have it, you know, there's, there's issues as a child and, you know, you don't always grow up in the the best environment. And that was me. Uh, didn't have much respect for authority. Thought I knew more than everyone else did what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And uh, got in <laughs> a lot of trouble. Actually almost died at a very early age from drugs. Yikes. So there was a lot of lessons learned as a kid. Uh, looking back on it now, I still have a hard time believing that was me. But as the, as my years as a kid progressed into the 10th, 11th, 12th grade, I realized, wow, I have no idea what I'm going to do with my life. <laughs> so I squandered some opportunities going to college, you know, playing sports. Uh, and really what it came down to was the Marine Corps. Uh, I, I wanted to join the military. And in my mind at the time, and because I'm biased as a Marine, I would say I wanted to join the best of the best. Ooh. So, yeah. So I there was a there was a Marine Corps recruiting poster back in the day of a of a Marine, you know, camied up, just looked hardcore and badass. And I remember that image is seared into my brain to today. And that was my uh, that was my my underlying motivation to join the Marine Corps. So I did. I joined it despite everyone thinking I wouldn't be able to make it through boot camp uh, just because of the type of kid I was, but the Marine Corps was my salvation. So it saved my life and it taught me a lot about who I am and mm. taught me a lot about what I'm able to do. And uh, it, it just, it, it launched me into a whole nother dynamics of living my life in a way that was very purposeful. I'm a serious guy and uh, I thrive of the structure and discipline as we kind of briefly talked about in some of our messages getting up early and stuff. But yeah, yeah that was the, uh, that was the initial phase of me, you know, going through my childhood, being in trouble, figuring out what I was going to do and then having the military be my, you know, be my shining light. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a really cool story to have. Um, it makes me interested then. So you, you mentioned there that people didn't expect you to get through the boot camp stuff so i'm interested what you've obviously done a lot of bodybuilding stuff and you're in, you're in great shape so did that start before the military because obviously a lot of getting through that is physical as well as mental but did you start the kind of bodybuilding stuff before that or was it during the military and then it carried on after or was it something that you started really properly on after the military no so during high school i i played football a little bit um nothing serious in terms of 
being a big time weightlifter. Mm. I messed around with it. I enjoyed it. Uh, but when I went to boot camp, lost a lot, like all that baby fat, all that kid weight. Mm. Does and, that see? <laughs> yeah, I was six, six, three, a hundred and sixty pounds out of boot camp. Wow. Frail. Yeah, I mean, my legs were ridiculously small. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I joined, uh, joined the Marine Corps, really got, got into the whole weight training stuff. My first deployment was to Okinawa, Japan. Oh, wow. And when you're, uh, when you're on a base out there in the middle of nowhere, you know, you either turn into a PT stud or you have a little fun and enjoy the alcohol. And I was the, the PT stud. So that was my, that was where I call it getting bit by the bug. Uh, I, would train at the base gym every day. I was reading the muscle magazines and the light bulb went off for me at that time. What I wanted to be when I um, got out of the Marine Corps was a pro bodybuilder. Mm. So completely different thought pattern than where I am now, because, you know, I, that, that was kind of my foundation into fitness was the mindset of being a pro bodybuilder. Uh, you know, that was when muscle tech was big back in the day, Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, all the, all the big dogs. So mm -hmm. that work ethic, I, I, I really admired it. And that's why I, I think I found bodybuilding. So, so therapeutic for me, you know, cause you can just have the hardest time in the Marine Corps or, you know, no matter what you get, no matter what you're doing in life. And when you have that outlet to go into and you can just break off in it and get lost and, and almost, tune yourself into another world. Uh, it's, mm. it's an amazing feeling. And for me, it's been the biggest form of therapy from the time I joined the Marine Corps to this day. Wow. I can totally see why you feel like that as well there. I mean, I'm, I'm not exactly hardcore on the bodybuilding or anything, but I know that every time I've gone to the gym and I've walked out of the door, I've felt so much better after lifting some weights and killing some PBs and stuff than I have walking in. It really has a very profound effect on how you feel. And it's just, it releases so much good, positive energy in you. Um, so how long were you actually in the Marines for then? How long, how long did you serve for? I did seven and a half years active duty, uh, went back over to Iraq and uh, did four years of contract work before I returned officially to the u.s and started my civilian you know reintegration whatever you want to call it yeah sure well i tell you what that that leads to my second question pretty well so yeah let's talk about that a bit then so after your time in the military then so you've obviously gone on to be very successful and you've applied a lot of the military ideologies to your ventures uh so my question is what was it like for you transitioning out of the military and how did your journey take to starting in the acting industry and uh, obviously the physical training industry too yeah, I'll tell you straight up, man. It was a nightmare. It was a complete and utter nightmare. Um, when I when I came back to the states, you know, this was about this job opportunity. Actually, with a Marine Corps, uh, the Marine the, the Marine Corps Component Command for U.S. Northcom, Mar Four North, based out of New Orleans. So coming to New Orleans, the goal was, or the 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 plan was to start working in this section as a contractor. And uh, that did not happen the way I had anticipated it to. So long story short, I fell flat on my face. Uh, I didn't have family in New Orleans. I was brand new to the city. That job didn't really pan out. Uh, I, I looked for work, trying to figure out where I could uh, you know, best fit in some way with my skill set. At the same time, dealing with some, you know, some trauma mentally, mm. uh, and it was just a, a recipe for disaster. Uh, it, I lost everything I had. I was living out of my car. I filed for bankruptcy. I, I was literally on rock bottom. So I had this amazing Marine Corps career. You know, as a section leader for the Marine Corps Body Bearers, I was the personal security for the vice chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff. I was at the Pentagon and the White House. It was an amazing experience, very eye-opening. And then all of a sudden now, here I am with nothing and nobody living in my car. Mm, so tough, though, isn't Ex it? But that, that yeah, happens extremely... to veterans, doesn't it? So often. 
It's a sad yeah, thing. yeah, and it's it's a it's it's a really hard thing when you do so much and and you're just kind of left out to hang dry and mm -hmm. um, hopefully the VA gets better. Um, I don't know if that'll ever happen, but we can always keep thriving and 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 doing what we can to push for it. But it was it was a my transition back to civilian life was I call it a combination of extremes because I went from a combat environment to an environment where all of a sudden I was homeless and lost everything I had dealing with mental issues. And then literally the next day I'm thrust right into the middle of Hollywood training some of the biggest names you can, you can think of. How does so that I never really had an, I never had a, an appropriate transition, you know, yeah. a, a, a transition where I could integrate myself back into civilian life in a way that was, calming and and I could really figure out my way it was just like boom 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 thrust right in right into it so mm. it, it all happened very quickly I can tell wow it's amazing but it's such a sad story because so many people have to go through that after the military I mean, I've spoken to quite a few military guys and they've all got a very similar experience it's just such a so it seems like such a flawed system but I mean, you, you were at that point, you were there at that rock bottom, and now you're here. I'm interested then, so what changed for you for, from being there to then getting onto some kind of a path that got you to this this person, this amazing person I'm looking at right now? What changed for you, and what, what kind of stuff helped you to get out of there? You know, it was really just me finding my anchor and, uh, and just – doing what kept my mind in a, in a place where I could keep things intact. Mm. Uh, you know, when you're homeless or when you lose everything you have, there's suicide, there's, there's drugs, mm. there's alcohol there, you know, there's so many different vices that people go down where they just completely lose themselves. And the, the thought that stuck in my mind the entire time was I made it back. I have a responsibility to do something with my life um, because I was fortunate enough to, to make it back here. So what I did was even in the darkest times, uh, I thought I'm going to try and compete. As weird as that sounds, fitness is my anchor. The Marine Corps provided me the discipline and structure with both of those together. It, it just created this, uh, the, the perfect storm, uh, if that's what you want to call it, to get mm. me through this this disastrous time. So sleeping in my car, sleeping in the gym, doing my laundry in the gym. Fortunately, I had a gym to do all this in, and that was the gym I was training out of. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so I, I competed in this regional local New Orleans show and won it as I had planned on doing. <laughs> and uh, and then started to promote health, health and fitness in the city because New Orleans is not known to be a healthy place. So it was kind of like a very, I stuck out even more. I was much bigger at the time, bodybuilding. Um, I had an amazing head on my shoulders at the time, having pulled myself through that. Um, but yeah, going back to the fitness piece, and that's why I talk about the mental stuff and the mindset approach to fitness, because it can save your life and it saved my life. Um, if, if it was not for the gym and for, for my love of fitness, I wouldn't be here having this conversation with you. Wow. Oh, that's, that's, that's very powerful. I mean, glad that you found something like that. And it is, I have to say, I mean, I've seen, I've spoken to so many people who've said the same thing. Everyone is such a big advocate for fitness and what it does for you. It's really really a powerful thing and you've, you've clearly clearly done a a great job of it looking at some of the pictures on the instagram <laughs> and stuff but so so acting and and training actors how did that actually happen then because that, that's that's quite a a, a big thing how, how did that come around for you this is where i call call it my destiny revealed itself i was in the <laughs> right place at the right time despite all the hardship that gym that i had found that i was doing that i started training out of actually uh was a gym that would become very popular for celebrities to to train at so i found this out because ryan reynolds was uh was there doing the green lantern he was the first uh the first actor i met granted there was very little interaction um but when i saw him i just kind of asked some questions about you know 
film related stuff. I had never had any ambition to be involved in, in entertainment or film and TV. So it was just a curiosity thing. And then in the gym, I had a, a, a poster on the wall that was just kind of like who I am. I'm a trainer here at the gym, had some Marine Corps stuff about me. Mm-hmm. And uh, Zach Efron came in in late 2010 to do a movie called The Lucky One. So he was training at that gym with his trainer at the time, whose name is Logan Hood. He trained the cast for 300. So wow. I, w- I was getting to know Logan and uh, started talking to Zach about the movie because he needed to look the part playing a Marine, playing, uh, playing a, an Iraq veteran. And uh, it just made sense. So they brought me into production. I met the director and the producers. We talked. They brought me on as a as another military advisor to him. And uh, that was my that was my realization that there's something here, and I want to figure out what that is. So I, I call it like guerrilla warfare. On that movie, I got to know a lot of the cast and crew. And what I ended up finding out was at the time there are more movies being more more movies and TV shows being shot in Louisiana than anywhere else in the world. Um, and so I connected with some of these guys and they would send me their production production report every time it was updated. And that report had all the different offices on there of the incoming movies, the outgoing movies, the ones that were in production. And what I did was I made flyers and I would bounce around these production offices every week, just getting to know everyone, introduce myself tell them about what I do, give some free training sessions and and just try and network. And, mm. uh, it worked because I, I kind of became the go-to guy in, uh, in Hollywood South. And th- that was what led me to the next big names of, of, you know, training the cast for GI Joe, which is where I met the rock and living in my car, eating my meal and getting a call from Sylvester Stallone. And, you know, it just, it turned into what it turned into. And, uh, you know, the acting stuff came because of the notoriety that I was getting from, from the attention of training these, these celebrities. And that's where the acting and stunts turned into something that I wasn't expecting because the directors and producers came in encouraging me to get in front of the camera. And uh, that was when I got an acting coach, started getting into some stunt training and uh, on and on. Destiny revealed indeed. Wow, that's brilliant. And those are those are some heavy, heavy hitting names that you've just put out there as well that you've worked with. Um, it, it makes me wonder then, who's been the best to work with and why? Like out of the actors that you've worked with, who's really stood out the most for you in terms of like that training ethic or that desire or something like that? Um, so... Obviously, training with uh, with Dwayne Johnson was a was a big deal. Mm. W- the enjoying the enjoy the enjoyment out of that was the the bond that we were able to connect with in terms of being cut from the same cloth. I say, mm. when we started training, we trained every morning at five a.m. and him he him and I would text the night before. to to get the workout together. So we kind of had an idea what we were going to do for the day. Mm. That way, when we got there, we warmed up and then we just got into it. There wasn't a whole lot of talking during training. It was, uh, it was a pretty amazing thing. You know, he would put his headphones on sometimes and a lot of, a lot of the communication that him and I had was very unique because you won't find any other person who's on this level where you can throw up some finger signs. You can point to a machine or you can just do a head nod. And it's like, you just know, you know, yeah. you know where we're going, you know what we're doing. And uh, so that was a very cool experience for me to, to be able to work with him and, in that intimate setting that's, you know, it's his anchor too, as he talks about a lot. So we have that in common. And what he didn't know at the time was the fact that I was living out of my car, this little piece of shit Toyota Corolla. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so it's, it's, it's so surreal to think back on all that, but, um, it, it, it just adds more flavor, adds more, uh, you know, adds more, uh, spice to the journey, to, to the chapter that I was, I was living in at that time. Oh, of course. I mean, that, that produces some of the best stories and gives all the motivational speeches so much more fuel and fire to them. And, and it's it's so nice to hear 
it i mean it's it's obviously a more impressive thing to hear someone who's come from somewhere that was like rock bottom and has built themselves up to to somewhere like this it's amazing um i'm really really happy for you you've done so well and obviously you've gone from strength to strength with that um i'm interested actually as well just want to ask about this while we're on the subject too so I have spoken to a few actors before and they've always emphasized on the point that in terms of physical training, they have to be able and ready to to get into serious shape according to their role and their movie character or whatever very quickly. In fact, a lot quicker than a lot of other people who might just be going to the gym casually or something. So I'm interested with the people that you've worked with, for example, what factors in a person have you seen that make the biggest difference between that rapid improvement and then just steady growth as well? Is there anything that you, you've seen in these actors that they've done or something about their ethic towards their training that you think is literally just made a difference between that kind of steady incline in, in, that most people go through and then that quick transition? Uh, well, the, the question you just asked kind of fits me because I fell into the action genre and that mm. action genre is where most of those really intense, fast transformations have to take place. You know, some of these actors will go from a very calm, maybe drama or just non-action type of film where they just, they're supposed to look normal. They're not supposed to look like they're, they're a gym stud. Mm. So going from one movie to all of a sudden now they need to look like, you know, they can crush the earth with their pinky. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's when it when it comes to the way I approach my my training with these with these uh, these actors and actresses, it starts with the mindset. And and what I mean by that is when I start working with them, we have a, a, a an initial discussion beforehand, a consultation, so to speak. Um, the actor and also with the production, because I want to understand as much about their character as I possibly can, because I want to incorporate that into the training. If there's, you know, how much functionality they need, you know, what, what the character, how they, how the character moves, all the nuances of the character are important for me to understand because it's going to help in the way that I train them. And Mm -hmm. then when it comes to actually getting in the gym and time to grind, that's where the mindset comes into play. And, I approach everything very simplistic. I don't want to overcomplicate things for them, but I I want them to know that, hey, we're on a time crunch here and it's time to transform. It's not time to to come in here and and talk and and take breaks and rest and not feel pain. It's time to come in here and feel pain, pain physically, but also mentally because it's going to be hard and you've got to push yourself to places that you don't normally go ever. And you don't ever want to really go there sometimes because it's not comfortable. Mm. So when you get into this space with the actors, you know, you try and set up the most simplistic plan to fit around their crazy production schedule. Mm. And, uh, and then obviously you have to be prepared, prepared for the contingencies because production schedules change all the time on, you know, who knows what the reason is, but they change a lot. Mm. So just being flexible with your programming, and being able to keep them motivated is important. So for me, having having these these actors and actresses come in, knowing that they're that they have to accomplish a very difficult task, knowing that there's going to be uncomfortable uh, pain involved, sets the whole thing up on the right foot. And that's mm-hmm. you know that's one thing me being able to express that at the beginning to let them know that what we're about to embark on is going to be a very difficult thing. But I promise you at the end of it, it's going to be so worth it because what you're going to see on the, on the big screen is going to blow people away. (laughs) Yeah, usually does. I mean, I can say you've done a good job because you need to be in some serious, seriously good shape to, to, to play the part of a Marine. That's for sure. Um, But yeah, that that's their training. That's, that's the actor's training, but it's a testimony to you because there's obviously there's the case of, coaches but they don't play sort of a thing as well um but you've obviously got this incredible shape as well brilliant physique and stuff too so you've clearly done it too so it's not just the coaching side of it so i'm interested um just to ask you as well so 
in terms of your your training, um, what have been some of the things that you do in your daily routines that you feel have had the biggest impact on achieving this incredible physique you've built um, that some of the listeners can also take away from this and, and take note of and apply to their training? And that could be lifestyle as well. It doesn't just have to be the gym stuff. So anything really. Yeah, there's there's a, there's a lot there's a lot that goes into it honestly, but uh, most of it's pretty simple. Um, when it comes to the when it comes to doing what I do, just kind of living this lifestyle, the number one aspect of it revolves around food, hmm. because you have to eat enough food, and you have to eat the right foods, um, and you have to eat them at the right time. So, uh, eating the most high quality foods you can possibly eat preferably single ingredient because you want to control what you're ingesting as much as possible. And uh, so the food aspect of it is extremely important. Uh, the mental aspect of it is important. So it's listening to the right things uh, when it comes to, let's just say music, for example, when I was living in my car before all this YouTube motivation stuff was mainstream, I found it. And I was listening to it, sitting in my car, going on walks, trying to figure my life out, listening to some of these motivational, these clips. And it just stuck with me forever because to this day, I still listen to them. And it's it's pretty cool because there's so much more. And this year, I'm going to be getting involved in some of those speeches now. So I'm, I'm excited about that because it's full circle. And, uh, you know, so having that positive mindset that keeps you from thinking negatively about not having what it takes to look a certain way uh, about creating obstacles in your mind that just aren't even there, but it's, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's like an escape, uh, a, a, a way out, so mm. to speak. When things get comfortable, you have a way out. Don't give yourself a way out. And that's what it comes when, when the mental structure comes for me, it's knowing that whatever I'm about to embark on, I'm going to finish it. I'm not going to stop until it's done. Um, so so that's on to the mental part of it. And then when it comes to the gym and the actual training itself, I get up very early in the morning and I try and get my training done as soon as possible because you never know what variables are going to come in the day. And when you get up that early and you get in your routine and you get the gym done or you get your exercise done for the day, there's a, there's a sense of accomplishment around it because by the time you've done all that and you're back to your office to work, some people are just getting out of bed or they're just, or they're just, uh, they're just having their first cup of coffee while they're still in their pajamas, you know? So it's, it's just a different in, in the way you approach life and the, and the difference in mindset and just really how much certain things mean to you. So for me, fitness is my life means everything to me. It's a huge, huge part of, of who I am. And without it, I can't even function. Mm, very good points. And you're right. Everything that you put in your ears, the stuff that you listen to, the people that you listen to, the things that you ingest, the things you do of your day, although the effects seemingly seem not so profound when you're doing the individual things, but in the bigger picture, it makes such a big difference to your mindset. Everything that you're putting in, it's building that mindset and that mind frame towards your training and your goals and your future, your future self. It's all making a difference, no matter how small it seems. And so talking about that morning routine, you didn't put a number in it. You just said very early. And I can tell people are listening <laughs> right now and they're thinking, uh, he's going to have five, isn't he? Give us the number. They need to hear it. <laughs> my, my morning Reveille is, uh, you know, between 3.30 and 4 a.m. So that's, uh, you know, I have my routine where that's the time I get up and I want to I be at the gym training, warming up no later than 5.30. So that gives me time to, to get up in the morning, to get my food together, to eat. I lay out everything the night before. So when I get up in the morning, everything is all laid out. I don't have to try and dick around with anything. It's my everything I'm going to eat, my bowls, my food, my supplements, my clothes, everything is laid out. So I, that's my routine in the morning is I get up and I just go through everything. And then I get to the gym to train. Um, when I, when I'm not training my off training days, I'll sleep in until five. Okay. Interesting. So, I mean, obviously three thirties pretty crazy. Um, 
I'm interested. So do you have your own like little garage gym or something there that you do? Is that how you manage that? Or do you go to a, a proper gym and stuff? And if you do go to a proper gym, is there ever anyone else there? Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm here in Vegas. Uh, it, it's, I call it being here in Vegas is an athlete's paradise. You know, <laughs> I don't, I don't drink, I don't party. I don't go to the strip. I don't do any of that nonsense, but there are a lot of people in the gym at that time. You'd be surprised wow. how many people are in there. Um, but I don't go, I have a garage gym, uh, for, for times when it's warmer and if I'm in a pinch on time and I can't make it to the gym, then I'll, I'll train in my garage. My, my home setup is pretty unique because my dining room is actually a cardio theater, my guest room. Well, so I have two guest rooms. One guest room is an office. One is my audition space. It's like my house is primed for creativity and, uh, in work. So literally I have no excuse not to get anything done because I've created this environment for myself, knowing what I need. That's powerful. And yeah, when you, when you create that environment, it makes it so much easier to get it done i mean that's that's the thing about improvement as well when you add convenience into into these things that you're trying to do it just assures that you are going to get it done and there's no excuses not to do it so that's that's a really powerful thing when it comes to improvement so so t- tell me about this then so 3 30 very early time um you've you've spoken <laughs> about kind of being chucked into these situations and having to figure things out before in, in your in your past career and stuff with your with your with life stuff um especially after the military so I'm, I'm interested did that happen as well with this wake up was it something that you just thought I'm gonna try and get up a lot earlier and I'm just gonna try and build my way into this routine kind of jump into the water and see if I can swim or was it something that really took time and a, and a big process to get yourself to that sort of a routine schedule Honestly, I've been getting up between four and 5 a.m. since I joined the Marine Corps. And it's just, it's something that I feel weird now. Like if there's any peep of light that's coming through my windows, I can't sleep. Um, Hmm. So I'm just up and yeah, I'm just kind of built for that morning routine. Now, granted, I'm not, I wouldn't exactly call myself a morning person. I just get up and do it. Hmm. Um, But you know, speaking of the roller coaster and, and the rock bottoms and stuff, you know, it, it's, a, I moved to Vegas in January of 2020. And the reason why is because one, I hate being in LA. It's a, uh, I don't know how people can live there. Honestly, it's a, it's a shit show of a shit show. And uh, my career was finally lined up with film and TV work that took me through the entire year of 2020. And I was already working on 2021, Mm. which was the first time ever that I got to that point. Uh, So I call that a huge success. And it allowed me to move to Vegas where I'm still close enough to LA to be there when I need to be there, but I'm in a place that fits me better. So I'm on the very Southern tip of Las Vegas. Only thing behind me are canyons and mountains and hiking. Mm. I'm in a part of Vegas that most people don't think of Vegas as. So I was finishing my last movie in New Orleans and came back home to Vegas. I was only going to be here for about three weeks before I launched off to my next project. And then COVID hit. COVID hit and shut down the entire world. Part of that was the film industry. And part of that was everything I had worked so hard for. So just like that overnight, everything that I had anticipated for 2020 was completely decimated overnight. So I had to figure out what my next steps were and uh, having that morning routine, having that discipline, having that structure allowed me to keep my head together as much as humanly possible as this world turned into what it's turned into now, which I can't even put into words and I won't even try to, because this is probably not the platform to do it. (laughs) But I think you can understand what I'm saying about the structure, right? So when you when you when you're going through tough times being able to have that routine and and having some sense of uh ownership of what you're doing over the course of the day instead of getting up and just trying to fly by the seat of your pants and feeling sorry for yourself and all that nonsense um that's what that's when it became even more important to me was these past 3 years i just kind of really anchored into every ounce of whatever i could hold on to for my own sanity 
Yeah, I really feel that. And I think I think one of the connections there almost is that when you have these routines that you stick to, even when the, the kind of the world around you sort of starts to do weird and bad things and everything, if you can still keep to these routines and these schedules and this discipline that you have, that keeps the normality in in your house. And that, that keeps the things that are normal. And that gives you that sort of sense of, I guess, security and safety in the fact that you're still on the path. Um, but the, the thing is, uh, you spoke about Dwayne and you guys were up at training at five. You get up at 3.30, you see Jocko and stuff, 4.30. It seems like success almost kind of a lot of the time comes hand in hand with this early get up. But there's so many people who are waking up at ridiculously late times. Like I have friends, I don't even hear from them until about 12.30 a lot of the time. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm interested then. So for, for, let's say someone's listening to this. One, one of these people... They know who they are. <laughs> of course they do. Um, so if someone wants to wake up much earlier, so maybe not as extreme as the 3.30, because that, that's like for people with kind of different schedules, it's sometimes it's more difficult. But let's say they just want to wake up at a, a reasonable time, you know, five or six or 6.30, something something like that. Um, how, how do you actually build into that routine if you've been in a routine that's like terrible for ages and how do you make it sustainable day in, day out? So it's not just a case of I'm going to wake up at this time for three days. I'm going to be absolutely trashed and exhausted. So I'm going to then sleep in and break that routine. Um, any advice or tips for kind of breaking the mold of that? Yeah. So let's just say you get it. You're a, you're a noon person. You get mm -hmm. up at yep. noon, which is mind blowing that people can get up that late. Uh, start to start to just, backwards plan you know what i mean so instead of getting up at noon maybe get up at 11 30 or get up at 11 mm. and then when you're when give that give that a few days see how it feels and then start to get up earlier and earlier but the key is when you get up it's what you're doing when you get up are you getting up and getting on the couch and watching tv or are you doing something productive are you getting up and reading a book are you getting up and going for a walk or, or like what are you doing because if you're just getting up and being mindless you might as well just stay in bed because it's not doing anything good. But if you're getting up and you're actually doing something productive and good for your brain, you're going to find that you're going to be more motivated to get up because you feel better. One of the biggest things that I always talk to my clients about and anyone for that matter is if you find the right thing to listen to, you put some headphones on and you go on and you go on a walk. I don't care what time it is, 3.30 in the morning, noon, whatever time it is, you're going to find that you're going to be thinking those creative thoughts that aren't readily available to you all day long are going to be available to you when you're on a walk, listening to the right things to stimulate your brain. Uh, so that's a, that's a huge thing for me. Right. So talking about those motivational clips, um, I go on my walks all the time and I listen to it every time I have a, another, uh, another, phone with me because I'll take voice notes because of my creativity is on a whole nother level when I'm walking. So I'm making notes because I don't want to forget what's happening while I'm, while I'm on my walk. And, uh, that kind of stuff, when, when you can, when you can really engage in that type of behavior and, and those, in that creative process, it's going to be much early. Or it's going to be much easier to start getting up early and start making your day more productive earlier rather than just kind of being mindless about it. Yeah, very true. Um, one of one of the kind of discoveries I made because I I'm I'm guilty of this I, I did have you know periods where I'd wake up way too late and I recognised very quickly that part of the reason was that it would be the, not not for lack of intention in in the night I would set the alarm for the right time and then that time would come and I'd feel so tired in the morning and there would be nothing really to get up for so then the the kind of ah oh, just another hour kicks in at that point. But actually in the, in the instances where I've had a physical trainer or a gym buddy or a, something scheduled or even something like a podcast or something in the morning to be up for, there's no question about it then because you wake up, if even if you're tired, it's just a case of got to get up now. I've got this on. And and it's so important to have these these things and and people that kind of accountability fact to be able to to, to get into that routine. So I think that would definitely help someone um anyone who's kind of listening thinking well I, I try but it doesn't work out for me because I always tend to go back to sleep and I always hit the snooze button um you really have to build 
people and things and accountability factors into your into your schedule that really helps to to build consistency with the right the right schedule for sure um but anyway so while we're on the 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 subject of helping people um I've, I've got one more for you now so this kind of this really really kind of blends well with with this last question too and and what we just said because it's about people who are in the wrong place and not happy with where they are and getting them out of there and I think you're an expert on this so it's definitely going to be right up your street so obviously some people listening will be not in great shape and they wish they look they were looking amazing uh, looking like the kind of people they see on Instagram and and all these these bodybuilders and stuff so obviously we don't know to which degree um, people are feeling like this or what degree this situation is for them but I wanted to ask you so for the people listening who want to get in better shape but feel like it's too much work or unachievable or they just don't know how to make a start on that journey what would you tell them to help them make the first step what should they do and focus on and what's the most important thing to keep in mind when you're just starting out um, you, you really have to try and make things as simple as possible and slowly, slowly integrate things in. And what uh, what I mean by that is <clears throat> if you don't, if you're just kind of eating whatever food, if you're just, if the only thing you have structured in your day is the time you have to go to work and the time you have to be home, there's a lot that you're missing. Um, so Food, you know, always back to the nutrition part for me, because I don't think people really understand how detrimental food can be to your health when you're eating the wrong stuff, the processed garbage, just unhealthy shit. And, you know, you have to think about your body in terms of this temple or this special place. And when you are able to figure the nutrition part out of it, so many light bulbs will start to come off because you're going to start feeling better. Uh, you know, there's that gut health, uh, gut brain axis, right? So if you're eating like shit, it's going to, you're going to feel it in your brain and in your thoughts and the way you feel sluggish and fatigued and brain fog and all this stuff. But when you eat healthy, that brain fog goes away. You think more clearly. You're not bloated. You feel like maybe you do want to go out and do something. You've got more energy. So for me, it all starts with the food. And and then from there, you start to, to tackle other little goals. Maybe, you know, maybe try and do 10 push-ups or mm. have a have a have a goal of maybe do 50 push-ups a day or a hundred crunches a day. And you just have to start building little benchmarks. But it takes routine, it takes structure, and it takes planning. You can't have success if you just do things when it's convenient to do them. Mm. So, you know, where people come home after a long day's work and plop on the couch and do whatever, it's like that time can be well spent other places or getting up earlier in the morning so you actually have time for yourself uh, where you can where you can be uninterrupted. You know, you don't have your phone interrupting you. You don't you don't have all the things that are interrupting you. So it's a perfect time to read a book. I find that when you read a book, especially when it's early in the morning or late at night, you know, those, it, it, it stays on your mind better, it, it, you know, back to the creativity thing, you, you just start to become more creative and you know, you, you journal journaling is huge because why keep all those thoughts locked up in your head that you're going to forget later on, you're going to think back on it and you can't remember. So it's like, jot that stuff down, start taking pride in like in, in your life and, you know, I, I think there's a, there's a big thing in today's society where we're getting so comfortable and so lazy because technology is making everything so much easier for us that we're kind of losing ourselves in a, in a very bad way. And you can see it happening. I mean, literally it's, it, I feel like we're on this expedited path now over these last few years that COVID's hit because technology has really come to the forefront on every single facet of life. And the physical part is what you have to keep in mind that's important because you weren't made to sit on a couch and, and, you know, and be on your phone all day or sit in a chair. We were meant to move and walk and be active and be in the sun and be grounded and all these things that people are, are truly missing out on. Because when you, when you don't do it and, or you don't even know what it feels like and, and when you actually do do those things, 
you can feel the connection to it and why it's so important back to mental health. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one one of the things you, you spoke about COVID and the kind of effects of things now. And one of the things that really bugs me in society at the moment is the food delivery apps. Because if you think about it, the, the kind of the bad cravings people get for unhealthy food and fast food and stuff, whether that's the pizzas or the burgers or the whatever, all these things, at least before, at least there was that laziness facts almost where you had to go out and get it you had to get up you had to go lock the door had to go and say i'm going out going to get some stuff had to go and pick it up pay for it whatever now it's just like you get this this craving or this urge to to fulfill this this dopamine hit from this thing and it's two clicks away from you it's uh it's shocking how that's happened but you you spoke about kind of like the brain fog stuff and i couldn't agree more but the other side to that, the other factor as well, is that it it's so so degrading to your self image and your your personal image of how you perceive yourself. And you might think that at the time it's all fine, it's just this, it's just this. But like we said earlier, isn't it? It's, it's a case of the small things all adding up, and it all just degrades your your self image. But when you actually are up early in the morning, you, you're getting the advantage and you feel good about yourself and you've ate something healthy and you can just tell your body's just loving it and you're full of energy. You go to the gym, you smash it out so much more powerful than the opposite, isn't it? 100% it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your whole life changes when you really, when you really put your health as a priority, you, you mm. really, you'll, you'll realize a lot of things about yourself that, put you in the situation that you were in yeah oh 100 percent, man i mean you you talk great sense you've got a great thing going and it's nice to see someone who instructs people and takes them to success but someone who's also got their their life really in that place as well it's great and you know you, like we said you're kind of in this process you're just evolving you're growing all the time so i'm interested to know then for, for my last little thing uh what's next for you man what, what's coming up what's what's on the planner for you um, you know, this past year, I really focused on building my fitness business. Mm. Um, I've got a flagship program that I'm, I'm very involved in with my clients. It's a 90 day program. I'm continually building on that, making it better. Um, my, my male clients lose between 40 and 60 pounds in 90 days. My, my female Damn. clients lose between 20 and 40. Um, so there's a lot of satisfaction in being able to have a business that I can call my own, that I don't have to rely on anybody else for, you know, for my income. You know what I mean? I work with people. I care about my clients. They care about me. It's, it's yeah. this beautiful relationship. I'm moving into the public speaking uh, realm in 23, much more than I, than I have been ever in the past. Um, my media team, Transparent Media Company is working really hard for me to get me back out there. Um, I had a lot of healing that took place last year, so I feel much more clear headed. Um, I have my focus going in the right direction. I'll be back involved in some film and TV work by the spring, late spring, early summer. Um, it, yeah. And it's just, that's really where I'm at right now. Whatever comes outside of that is icing on the cake. I'm just happy that I started this new year off on the right foot. I feel great. I'm healthy. Uh, my family's still around. You know, despite whatever's going on in the world, we can't control what's going on, but we can control the things that affect us directly and those around us. And, you know, if, if you can just constantly be a good person and do the right thing, I'm, I mean, I think it'll rub off on a lot of people and hopefully we can pull ourselves together and, uh, you know, leave this this clown world that we're living in right now behind as a, a thing we can talk about in the future that, Hey, yeah, we were <laughs> remember 2022 and 2021. And <laughs> yeah. Remember that shit show? <laughs> how much yeah. better things are now? Hey, how about that? Yeah. That's a great conversation to have hopefully in the future. Uh, Hey, Aaron, there's, there's one more thing I want to ask you now. I've been thinking about this all podcast, literally all this whole episode. I wanted to ask it. I've left it right to the end. Um, So, I've noticed it. I noticed it straight away. I had to had to had to ask it. So I just want to say that the audio listeners will be bamboozled by this and they're gonna to have to go to YouTube to, to know what I mean. But the necklace, I love it. It looks really cool. Um is there a little story behind that? Where did you get it from? Uh, you know, it's a it's an arrowhead. 
Yeah, so yeah. There, there's, there's some meaning behind it. It's kind of a personal thing. Someone okay. who is extremely close to me, who I, I love to death and care about so much, uh, got it for me this past Christmas. Um, so it's, you know, it's just something nice to have, mm. you know, a, a little token of someone you care about, but also something that's very meaningful that you, you just, no matter where you are, it's, it's always there. I love that. That's really nice. And it looks great as well. So <laughs> you two birds of one stone there, which is perfect. Um, So anyway, this has, unfortunately, we're over now, but this has been the four questions done for today. And before we wrap this one up, it is time for what I like to call the shameless plug. So Aaron, feel free to take a minute and promote anything that you're working on, want people to take a look at or just something you believe in and make sure to drop your socials or your website as well so people can find you. Yeah. You know, I'm a simple guy. I don't, I don't push anything. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Um, you know, if the right opportunity came along, it would be, but however, the only thing that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really focused on is people who are looking to change their lives. I have a 90 day program that'll do that. Um, if you're interested in me speaking, hit me up on any of my social media channels. I would love to to have a conversation. Um, but yeah, so I'm most active on Instagram, I'm I'm active on all of them, but most active on Instagram. It's either Aaron Williamson, Aaron V. Williamson, or A.V. Williamson, depending on if uh, someone else has my name. But yeah, I'm all over social media. I'm all over the internet. I'm easy to contact through my website or my social platforms. But uh, that's really it. Intense 90s, my program. That's my jam. Damn right. Sounds pretty badass. Last thing as well. Um, Is there a... Like, is there a marine slang term or word or expression that you use that I can take away from here and the listeners can take away from here and uh, nab from you? Oh, I mean, there's some inappropriate <laughs> one. <laughs> it depends on what the context is. You know what I mean? Uh, I just. Uh... Oh, which what, what would that be? What, what context are you looking for? He's filtering through them. I don't know, just something in training. Is there, is there like kind of a, a motivating sort of word or like some sort of a it's go time kind of a thing that you use for the sort of let's let's get after it kind of a thing? You know, in the Marine Corps, there's a couple uh, a couple pieces of jargon that you'll you'll hear about. I think one of them's kind of morphed into one word. It used to be oorah. Now yeah. it seems to be more on the raw side or there's yut, yut. <laughs> uh, you know, so it, it's, you know, kind of just, uh, uh, little warrior sentiments. Love it. I'm going to nab that from you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Don't copyright it anyway. Right. <laughs> well, Aaron, thank you so much for joining me today for the talk for podcast. This has been an absolute pleasure and it's, uh, it's certainly been a good one to get back from the illness from. <laughs> it's been nice being on with you, Louis. I appreciate you having me on brother. No problem. And thank you guys for listening. This has been episode 55 as mentioned. And if you'd like to listen into our past episodes, go and have a look at our channel. It's um, we're, we're pretty much everywhere. YouTube, Instagram, all the all of your places to find podcasts. It's going to be there somewhere. And um, if you'd like to listen in for the future ones as well, find those channels and please make sure to hit the subscribe button and spread some love by leaving a like and a comment. Any shares are helpful as well. That's us signing off for now.